In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the perhaps lesser discussed advantages of living and traveling in an RV. Yeah, specifically in comparison to traditional travel by plane, train, or automobile. One big advantage that comes to mind is that many, most, or all of your possessions are always with you. Yeah, you're gonna have your bed, your toilet, your shower, everything that you're used to and comfortable with. You're not gonna have to worry about you know, whether they've washed the sheets sufficiently at the hotel bed or what's whatever, or it. what's crawling in it. Uh, your bathroom is going to be as clean as you like your bathroom to be. Stocked with toilet paper. Yeah, and you're not going to have to worry about, you know, having shower shoes to use the shower that's being used by multiple uh, people. So it's very nice to have your own things with you. Yeah, and for the most part, you're always packed. You're not hauling things in and out of the hotel room. It's always in your RV. Sure, you're going to probably have to stow some things before you take off but you're, you're you know it's very minimal in comparison to maybe uh, carrying some luggage up three <laughs> flights of stairs or something like that and then um, also you don't have to worry about the airport uh, <laughs> losing your bags or anything yeah. like that they're always with you so yeah. that's a great advantage another advantage is having ready resources on board like power and water Yes, we've been in situations where we were in hotels and the power went out for an extended period of time or even uh, taking a shower. I've been all soaked up and, and the water goes off. Now, this isn't to say that this could not happen when you're RVing, like in an RV park or campground, because it has done that yeah. then too. But I can just say, hey, Susan, would you mind flipping on the water pump? And we, we can use our stored water as well as our battery backups. Yeah, another advantage uh, of resource to be on board is your bathroom. You can pull over and use the bathroom whenever you need to. We find a lot of times rest areas will be closed for construction or whatever, and you can't pull in there and stop, so you can just pull your RV over and use your own bathroom. <laughs> yeah, we've been broke down on the side of the road, or not even just that, but when the, the road is closed for a reason, yeah. accident or some type of landslide or whatever. You're stuck in traffic for several hours and being able to have uh, food and a bathroom readily available was very, very nice. <laughs> yes. Another advantage or benefit of living and traveling in an RV is that it gives your pets ongoing familiar surroundings. Yeah, the outside may be changing, but the inside and where they're gonna sleep and eat is always gonna be the same. Now this is very important for us because our dog Barkley is deaf and almost blind. So <clears throat> having that familiar place for him to be is, is very important to us. Yeah, his bed's always there, his food's always in the same place, same smell, same surroundings, <laughs> same, um, companions. <laughs> so yeah, and we don't well. have to worry about finding a pet-friendly hotel or Airbnb that's always going to be changing. Um, traveling by plane with uh, pets is possible, but it's very stressful for both the pets and the owners. So yes. uh, it's definitely a great advantage to have that familiar surrounding for the pets. I know Barkley agrees. <laughs> Another obvious benefit may be your ability to change locations easily, to move because of neighbors or weather or something like that. Yeah, any of those kind of circumstances. We've been in situations, I know we've been in situations in hotels and things where there's been construction and things like that. We were just pretty much stuck, <laughs> yeah. you know, but in uh, the RV lifestyle, we've been able to just pull up anchor and move when the weather was gonna be a little bit bad in the area. We could take off a hundred miles away and still be within driving distance of some of the things that we wanted to see. Or there's been times when uh, the park was too noisy or even uh, a dry camping area was too noisy and we were able to move a mile or two away and uh, adjust that on the fly. So it's, it's very convenient to be able to move like that. Yeah. A last but not least advantage is cost. Depending on your circumstances, your RV stay could be free or at least considerably less costly. Yeah, there are several options for staying free in an RV. Anything from a BLM land to businesses to free campsites, uh, some even with some type of hookups to them, uh, lots of resources for staying free in an RV. 
Yeah, it's just a matter of doing a search. They're just all over the place, and some states are better than others with them, but uh, you can you can find them all over the place. So that's a huge advantage, and that could uh, really save you so much in, in your travels when you consider adding up uh, the bills of uh, hotels and Airbnbs and things like that. Considerably less, even when you stay in a campground with full yeah. hookups, you do have to be careful with those because they can be quite spendy too. Yeah, if we were to add up what we would have paid staying in hotels or Airbnbs or situations like that, as compared to what we paid for our travel in the RV, I'm sure it would have been much, much more expensive. Yeah, considering <laughs> all of the adventurous places that we've been. Yeah, and so we were able to put our money towards the adventure rather than the place to sleep. We'd love to read what you think about all this in the video comments section. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up subscribe and click on that little notification bell. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. So in our background, we have a lot of different cacti and shrubs and trees. And this is chain fruit choya growing here. Some jojoba down in there. And it's the whorl cacti are growing all around here. There's a little compass barrel cactus there and some of the skeletal remains of Choya there. It's stunning. And up in this ironwood tree here is something that people may be tempted to remove. It's desert mistletoe or Phorodendrum californicum I believe is the scientific name and this is native to the Sonoran and Mojave Desert. It's best left alone because it does provide birds and other animals uh, some protection and sustenance. Even honeybees will use the pollen from this desert mistletoe. So it's very wonderful to have around.